Okay, everybody. Um, let's see. Just making sure that I got my stream up here. Looks good. All right. Okay, everybody. Um, welcome back to Dreadnought Woodshop Live on Wednesdays. Um, as you know, we've been working on this vessel uh, for the past couple of weeks. Um, this will make week number five, I guess. Uh, last week, I was actually out of town. I was doing an event with uh, Klingspore up in North Carolina. For those of you that uh, were able to make it out there, thanks for uh, coming out to see us. Um, so obviously last week I wasn't able to do a video. Um, but this week we're going to be doing um, finish on this piece. Now, you might remember from the last time that um, I was having some difficulty with cleaning up the uh, the mouth or you know the opening at the top of the vessel uh, because I didn't have a steady rest well I still don't have a steady rest um, welcome Kurt um, I still don't have a steady rest and uh, my steady rest that my bowl steady that I have from one way doesn't fit the powermatic which that's fine so I took it over to the Nova and I happened to notice that the tenon had cracked um, from last week, which really stunk. Um, so I was able to bring it over to the, uh, I was able to bring it back over to the lathe and put it between centers, and turn a second tenon on it, and that worked out well enough to finish up the uh, the rim of the vessel. Um, but it also started to crack when I started to level out. There's inside you can see uh, where I glued the two halves together. And I had hoped to be able to blend that a little bit, but um, it's not in the cards. Uh, you know, sometimes you just, with these things, you gotta cut your losses somewhere. And uh, it had already broken off the tenon twice, so I thought that was a good place. So um, anyway, um, I did manage to get the inside of it finished. Um, I'll show you after I get the finish on it because it's a little precarious the way I have it mounted on the lathe here. Um, but I was able to uh, get it back in there and I was able to get that taken care of and I went ahead and worked on the foot uh, and got that pretty much under control so that we can work with the finish um, this week. And I had asked at the last, uh, the last video what kind of finish um, folks would like to see and the majority of the answers that I got was CA um, because uh, quite a few people commented that they had not seen um, CA, a CA finish put on a piece this big. So, um, seems like a good enough reason for me. So, and I happen to like CA finishes, so there you go. Um, so anyway, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, get cracking with this. But before I do that, one thing I want to say, um, I'm going to switch cameras here so we can start talking about this thing. Okay. So this is where I'm at. Um, you might notice that I had to round this corner over right here. It was a it was a sharper transition before. Um, I kind of like the rounded I kind of like the rounder profile, um, but it was necessitated because through all of the mishaps I've had with it, uh, I had it mounted up and it wasn't quite right. And when I touched this shoulder, I lost a chunk, lost a small fragment out of there, and so that sharp corner had to go. So I ended up rounding it over a little bit, and to be honest, I'm pretty happy with it like that anyway. So um, that's fine. So uh, before I get started um, putting a finish on this thing, the first thing is this this isn't this is primarily oak, and oak has a very open pore structure. So um, you want to definitely take some compressed air. I got my little compressed air gun here, um, and you want to blow out any dust that's in those pores. Now I've done that. I've done that more than once for this piece, so don't be surprised when you don't see much dust come out of it. But I'm going to do it again because I don't want to get that dust trapped in there, trapped in my finish. So, Alright, so let's talk about a couple other things before 
we get started. Let's talk about a couple tips. Let me go back to this other camera here. Uh, and we're going to talk about this. So, the first thing most people are wondering, probably wondering, about doing a CA finish, any CA finish really, is how do I keep from having blue, uh, well, finger, you know, colors on my fingertips from the paper towels or gloves or whatever getting stuck to my fingers when I do these CA finishes? Well, if you go out and buy, you go out to Walmart or Sam's Club or wherever um, and purchase some of these uh, polyethylene uh, disposable gloves, um, these things actually CA doesn't stick to this. So you can use this and you don't have to worry about having things stuck to your fingers, which is very, very nice. And these are super cheap. I think I buy, uh, let's see, this is a box of 500 and I get four of those. So I get 2000 of them for $10 at Sam's club. So, I mean, they're really, uh, inexpensive, right? And my applicator of choice are these little blue, uh, shop towels. So, Basically what I do is I take a couple of shop towels. Um, I usually do four or five at a time and I use a paper cutter and I cut it in half and then I stack it all up and then I cut them into about one inch wide uh, strips and I'll use these to apply my finish, right? Now another problem uh, with CA finishes is the fumes, right? Because let's face it, it doesn't smell good and it you know, very possibly may be killing off a few brain cells and I don't have to spare. So um, I find that if you put a fan, you see this little battery operated dealy right here. Uh, I have it clamped onto my tool rest. And I find that if you put a fan blowing the fumes away from you, um, that seems to work pretty good. And you don't need a huge fan. Um, ideally, um, when my lathe was on the other side of the shop, I had a big fan on the wall and it pushed a quite a bit of volume of air um, away from me. So I had it, it would have been on the wall behind me. Um, but, uh, I haven't really decided on whether I love having the Powermatic here or not. So I don't really want to move everything over here. I want to try to, uh, I don't know exactly how long it's going to take me to decide that I want to have it there, but, um, that's what we're, you know, that's where I'm at with that. So I'm not going to move the fan right now. Plus I really don't have anywhere on the wall to put it. So this worked out really good. I got it from, uh, somewhere, some discount place and it's battery operated and rechargeable and that's nice. So anyway, um, what I'll be doing is when I get ready to turn, when I get ready to put the finish on, I just turn this on and, and aim this in the general direction so it'll blow uh, the fumes away. And that seems to work fairly well. All right, I think that's enough tips. Oh, one more thing. This one right here, yeah. yeah, yeah. So my finish of choice is star. My CA of choice for finishing is uh, Starbond um, thin. I only use thin. Some people use mediums and thicks, and you know, medium and thick, and all that other stuff, and and that's fine. Um, typically, if I use medium or or thick or anything like that, it's for pore filling properties, right? Um, with this oak, I'm going to try, I don't really care about it being like glossy, glossy. So, um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and apply my regular thin finish and I'm going to take a look at it and see how it looks. And if I feel like I need to fill the pores then I'll do that. Um, but anyway, we're going to be applying the Starbond, uh, super fast thin product, uh, 12 coats. And let me grab my activator because I'll be needing that too. Not very much of it. I don't use a lot of activator, so I don't need very much, but I do need to have that on standby. So anyway, I think we're ready. You guys are probably tired of hearing me talk anyway. So let's get this fan situated. All right. So like I said, I'm going to use these blue paper towels um, as applicators. All right. So what I do is I take it and I fold it in half, right? And then I'm going to put a couple drops here on there. And I'm going to apply that. Then I'm going to fold that back and put another couple drops. And then I'll flip it around and I'll put, and I'll, I'll flip it around and then I'll apply, make one more application. All right. So let's get some gloves on. 
and uh, let's get on with this thing. So. Actually, a uh, little fun fact, the polyethylene that these gloves is, are made out of is the same material that the glue bottle is made out of. Hence the reason why it doesn't stick to it. Because it wouldn't do any good for it wouldn't do any good for the glue to stick to the bottle. So here we go. Let me turn my fan on here. Save my few precious brain cells I got left. Alright. Okay. So now, like I said, I'm gonna take this towel here and I'm gonna fold it in half. And uh I'm going to put a couple of drops on here. Now, I do want to say, I know I'm still talking. and I haven't started applying anything, but um, the tips are kind of coming to me as I go. Um, so, first of all, I want to set some expectations, okay? If you're going to finish something this size with CA, you have to understand that the first couple of coats, this thing is going to be very thirsty, just like anything else. So, it's going to draw the finish out of the towel much faster so the first couple of coats you may not be able to go from end to end um, with one paper towel you may have to reload halfway through all right so a lot of times what i'll do is i'll put some on and i'll get down so far and then i'll put a little more and go so far and then i'll fold that over and you know so you're going to see me do that um that's really the the only real uh kind of persnickety part of this uh, once you get enough coats on there, you'll be able to go from end to end, no problem. So let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and get cracking with this. So I got my towel here. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna apply a couple of drops of CA there. Okay. And turn this on slow. No need to go fast. You don't wanna be slinging this stuff all over the place. And then I'm just gonna apply it uh, to the piece. And I probably let that sit on there a little too long, so I didn't get to go very travel very far at all with that one. So I'm gonna just pick up where I left off, add a little bit more, right? Flip this over. You know, the frugal use of paper towels and gloves is not a requirement of this system. It's just that I happen to be frugal. So, you know, I try to get as many miles out of a paper towel as I can, even though it doesn't really cost that much. But, you know, it's just who I am. So we're just going to keep on applying. You know, I like to keep a wet edge. I don't want to have swirls, um, you know, areas where there's... CA in areas where, you know, areas in between without, because some woods will, uh, can discolor that way, um, and we don't want that. So now I've made it all the way down from end to end, okay? So I'm going to do it one more time. Towel is a little too small. All right, that one too. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna turn this off and take a look at what we got so far. All right, so it looks like any other finish, right? Not too shiny, whatever. But all that's gonna change in just a little bit. But I'm actually pretty excited because this thing has some pretty nice figure in it and um, I'm hoping that by the time I get all the I get the gloss built up that I'm going to be able to see that so this is pretty much dry because it's thin okay so let's go ahead and turn this back on and we're going to go with the next coat you're going to do it the same way we're going to put a couple you know a little bit on there and then we're going to come in here and uh, apply like I said the wood's still a little thirsty so we're not going to get in in coverage right yet, just yet, but that's coming.
Okay, that's starting to look a little better. All right, so let's take a look. See how this is going. See, looking pretty good. Now, I'm not doing anything magical here. I mean, this is just, you know, this is just as, as you see it. The way I'm doing it, that's how it goes. It's that simple, all right? So let's continue. Now, up here in this, up here by this collar at the top, all right? So it's got a little, there's a pretty sharp indent there. So what I'll have to do is I'll have to bend this paper a little bit and get some CA on there and kind of like jam it in there um, to get the CA down in there, which is, which is not a big deal. Um, it's not hard to do. So I just put a little bit on the edge there and then I just take this, oops, and just jam that in there, right? And that'll take care of that little bit. And then I'll just use this towel as normal. So go ahead and put a little more on here. And here we go. Yeah. How about that? Now I I've done this demo before and I've had people ask me um, why I only go in one direction. I don't really have a good answer for that. That's just the way I do it. But you could just as easily go either direction from um, head to tail or tail to head. It doesn't really matter. All right, so we're starting to build up a nice uh, finish here. So, <clears throat> as you can see, it's not sticking to me, right? But it's really uh, advantageous not to have to worry about trying to get, trying to keep the glue off your hands while you're applying this finish. So, and periodically I'll stop it and check and make sure that everything is setting properly, right? If not, then you can just hit it with a quick uh, spritz of, C of uh, activator, which actually, I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now, because typically I'll do that. Um, I'll do on a smaller project. I would do two coats, <clears throat> then activator, and do that third coat, and then throw that towel away. But this one's, you know, it's a pretty good sized project, so you know, um, I just do. <clears throat> I got about the equivalent of two coats on there already, and then I threw some activator on there. And what I, the reason why I do that is because some woods have a tendency, I don't know, they have like little problems with the CA finish and usually it'll show up in those first couple of coats. And what you can do is you go ahead and hit it with the activator and put that last coat on there and then you can turn it off and inspect it, right? And you can go, you can, you know, turn it and you can look at it and make sure that you don't have any problems. Usually the problem that I get is like a, a weird orange peel kind of effect going on. Um, I don't have any of that here. This stuff is finishing beautifully, but uh, that does happen from time to time. And the reason why I do this, the activator is so that when I, you know, do my inspection, if there's a problem, I can go ahead and I can sand that back. I can sand it back. And uh, at that point, then those first three coats are going to start to act like a sealer. So whatever problems there were, whatever inconsistencies between the finish and the, and the, and the project will be resolved because Basically, at that point, you'll be applying uh, CA on top of CA, which is going to give a good um, a good bond. But in this case right here, I don't have to do any of that because this is coming along just great. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, crank this puppy back up, and we're going to get the rest of these uh, coats of finish on here. Now, I talk about 12 coats, but when I'm doing these big pieces, I can't really count the ones. I don't really count the coats that I put on until I can go from end to end. Um, I start counting once I can get, you know, pretty good. I can get pretty close to end to end coverage with it. So, and we're getting there. Okay, so I'm gonna count that one as one.
two. And I don't wait in between coats. I don't use activator, well, other than that inspection coat. I don't use activator in between coats. I don't sand in between coats. I don't do any of those things. I will tell you why. If you want a glossy finish, right, with minimal distortions in it, okay, think mirror-like finish, um, then the only coat that matters is the last one. So if you build up enough, if you build up a thick enough coating that you can aggressively sand uh, that last coat, you don't need to sand in between. You just go, just run through the process, and then whatever, uh, if you got dust, if you got whatever in there, you know, if it tra if if it translates up through the layers to the top, all you have to do is aggressively sand it back. Uh, you'll be able to aggressively sand it back, and then um, buff it and you will have a spectacular finish on your hands. And you know, this doesn't take days, hours, you know. It's gonna take me a little longer because I'm shooting this video and talking about it, but it doesn't take that long to do this. Now, one thing I will say is I can get this to a pretty good finish. Uh, for the sake of this video, I could do that tonight. But if I wanted a really, really great finish, I'd wait until tomorrow and then go back and uh, wet sand and buff it. And giving it, you know, those couple of extra hours uh, really helps um, with the finish. Now while you're doing this, also, if it starts to grab, go ahead and spritz it with a little bit of CA. I mean with a little bit of activator. If it starts to grab on the on the paper towels. I think I'm gonna put two more coats on there and then call this thing, uh, call it done. And we'll move on to the next thing. I hope that uh, trying to keep an eye on the cameras and all that while I'm doing this, but kind of got to keep my eye on the game, uh, i.e. the finish. So I'm hoping that I'm catching all this. If not, if you're missing something, um, say so in the chat and uh, I'll try to see if I can make the necessary adjustments um, so you can see, so you see better. I think I've done more than 12 coats, but yeah, it don't matter. I think I'm getting a pretty good build on this anyway. So I'll do these last two, and uh, that's it. But you can see now that I'm able to go clear from end to end on this piece, and it's about, I don't know if it's 12 or 13 inches, it's in there somewhere. Um, but I'm able to, as you can see, I'm able to easily do that. Okay. So now that I've put on all my coats of finish, I'm gonna do a little bit more. Uh, I'll do a little bit more activator, okay? Just to harden it up for the sake of sanding almost immediately. Okay. So that's the application process. Looks like I developed a little hole in my glove, but but you can see there. That looks pretty snazzy, right? Okay. Now, it would probably be shy, be better, well, it'd be glossier for sure if I filled those pores first. But I really don't want to do that because, well, it's oak and I like it. <laughs> um, but that's going to, the fact that it does have those pores is going to bring, is going to knock the sh uh, sheen back a little bit. And another note about that too is um, I find that wet sanding um, CA with uh, open pores or whether it's grain, whether it's open grain or, let me turn this fan off, whether it's open grain or 
uh, like a void or a divot or something like that or a feature or whatever. Um, don't wet sand it. <laughs> I know I said wet sand, but don't wet sand it because what happens is that uh, the CA dust gets stuck down in the pores and you'll never get it out. I mean, ever. So what I'm probably going to do is just dry sand this with some wet dry paper with some uh, four, with some 600 or 1200, actually 1200 um, sandpaper, um, just, you know, to, just to knock the nibs off or whatever. And then I'm going to take it over to the buffer. Now, um, I'm going to try to turn one of the cameras around so you can see the buffer. Uh, but I haven't tried to do that before, so I don't know exactly how that's going to go, but I'm going to try to do it anyway um, so that you guys can see uh, what, I, what I'm doing. So let me, um, yeah, let me get some of this uh, fine sandpaper and we'll knock this, uh, knock this finish back a little bit and then we'll take it over to the buffer. So actually, I think I'm going to use these, uh, use a couple of these micro mesh pads here. You really don't have to do that much because the, uh, the, uh, Triple E on the buffing wheel is going to do the majority of my uh, um, the majority of the work on this finish here. Um, and one other thing too, as long as you don't put any waxes or anything like that on here, um, <clears throat> if you're not happy with the finish, or let's say you you know burn uh, burn through it at the buffer or while you're sanding it, you can also um, you can put it back on the lathe and put more um, finish on it. Uh oh. Man, I hope this is working. <laughs> I hope this is working. Um, my computer seems to be acting up still, um, but hopefully it worked. If not, I have another vessel I could finish, but hopefully this is going. This is going okay. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and uh, use this. I think this is a 1200 grit. Um, and I really don't... I really don't like sanding it with the lathe on, so I'm just gonna, you know, lightly do this. Now, sanding it like this, without the water, that dust will blow right out, just like any other sanding dust. Which is why I prefer to do it that way. feels better. According to my uh, YouTube thing, it says the quality is not great, but uh, anyway, I'm just going to soldier on. <laughs> so we got all this, uh, I'm just going to go through here and uh, sand this back because if you, if you run your hands on it, you know, you rub, I, obviously you can't do that in a video. But if you rub your hands on it um, before I hit it with the sandpaper, it's got a little bit of, you know, it's a shop, so it's dusty in here. So it's probably a couple of dust nibs and things like that. So this is really just to take those away. Um, again, I think, I'm pretty sure you could just do this on the buffer, but, you know, this is just part of my process. And again, if it wasn't for the fact that it was open, you know, that the oak has an open pore structure, I would definitely be uh, wet sanding this have a little bit of uh, lubricant while I'm sanding, so, but, so, a little bit of unrelated uh, information, I guess, um, today I had my first um, shop, I first gave my first class in my shop, I had uh, a friend from, who actually works at Rockwood come by, and uh, we turned a little acorn. Well, I helped her turn a, a little acorn, and it went quite well. So um, that's something that I may. That's something that I'm definitely gonna do. Uh, gonna be doing going forward. So um, keep you all posted on how that goes. And any of you that are local, if you're interested, hit me up. All my information's on social media. Um, I think you can even find my phone number on Instagram. So up here on this 
uh, OG shape. Um, it's probably going to be a little bit easier to sand it with the lathe going because they're, you know, access. I have a couple of little access problems going on there. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. All right. Okay, and then I'm going to try to set this camera up so that you guys can follow me over to the buffer. And I, I'm using a little Sony camcorder thing um, for one of my capture devices that has a nice, pretty nice zoom on it. So hopefully that'll work. So I'm going to go back and blow the dust out of here. Okay. All right. So let's take this off. So that's where we are so far, okay? This is gonna be much improved uh, after I get back from the buffer, all right? So I'll put this down and uh, I'm gonna try to change this other camera. So um, also be warned, my shop is not the tidiest of shops. <laughs> and today I've been moving stuff around. Um, I'm gonna switch back to this camera right here so I can show you some stuff. So. Um, not sure if, if it's immediately noticeable, but this backdrop has changed significantly. Um, you might notice that my hand planes are missing, right? And a couple other things. And I've, I've moved all of my wood turning items from over there uh, on that other wall over to here. And then I moved the hand plane cabinet over there, uh, which is closer to the workbench. So um, everything's in more disarray than usual. Um, not that I'm going to try to claim to have a tidy shop, but anyway. So let's get on with trying to switch this over. Oops. Okay. So let's see if we can turn this one around. Oops. All right. So there is the buffer. On a really expensive stand. <laughs> Also, my, uh, also known as my uh, Viking drill press from Nova. All right, this Zoom thing, man, I tell you, I cannot get the hang of that. All right, so that looks like it's gonna work. So let me turn this around so I can see. All right. Okay, so here I am at the buffer put this down for a minute. So I'm going to pull this off. This is my wax wheel that I almost never use. I don't know if you can hear me or not, but, um, well, anyway, I don't know if that mic's going to reach, but so basically, uh, this is the Beal buffing system and it comes with three, comes with three wheels. So this is my triple E, uh, the white diamond and the wax. All right, we're not going to be using the wax. We're only going to be using the other two. So this is the mandrel that comes with it. You can actually get a piece uh, that fits on a number two Morse taper, um, and you can mount it right on your lathe. But I have chosen to mount it to a slow speed grinder, uh, and that's how I use it. So basically, I just thread this onto the end of it like so, okay, turn it on, <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and explain this first because I don't think you'll be able to hear me, but I'm going to turn this on and then I'm going to charge it with a little bit of compound and then I'm going to use it on the uh, piece to uh, buff it, so here we go. Just wait till I get back over there with this thing. It's doing it. It's doing its job marvelously.
I'm not going to do all of it, I'm going to do half, so then that way I can come back and show you the difference. Well, as best as the camera will show it. Changing the wheels out, simple, just like that. Okay, so, you know, I'm watching this along with you guys, and I'm figuring out that watching somebody buff something is a lot like, is a lot like watching them sand, and nobody wants to watch that. <laughs> so, I decided to just do half, and see if I could get the camera to show you the difference between the two. So, I'm going to switch to the overhead camera real quick, and see if that does a little bit better. So, let me get rid of this light. Alright, so, this... This is the side that I buffed, right? And I didn't really get down deep into it because, um, you know, it was a little awkward trying to not, you know, show you my back and show you actually what I was doing. So anyway, this is, this is, I believe this is the side that I, that I have buffed, right? And this is not going to be a great demonstration. I can see that now. Um, yeah, this part right here, I haven't. So this isn't going to really show. I guess it's not really showing that well uh, for the camera, but um, it really does uh, make a big difference. And the main thing is it feels different. Like it gives it a more of a soft kind of feel um, once you uh, take it over to the buffing wheel and get it buffed out. You know, and the wood's pretty nice and, you know, I'm pretty happy with it. I still got to go back and finish up the inside. So you can see right here where I was able to uh, clean that up and curve that uh, shoulder around. But you might also unfortunately be able to see um, down in here where, let's see if I can show it, where the two halves are glued together. See there? And I had finished the inside as you know. And uh, I went back in there and I was able to touch it up a little bit, but then the tenon cracked. So there's no, I wasn't able to get it you know, quite as nice as I wanted it. Um, but, you know, yeah, you win some, you lose some. What are you going to do? So anyway, I think it turned out all right. So let me um, switch back up here to this other camera. I'm going to look at the comp, look at the chat and see uh, if there's any questions I need to answer. Let's see here. Turn this back on. So let me go through the chat here. First of all, thank you guys, everybody, for uh, joining me today. I've been looking forward to this uh, since the last time. Let's see. So, uh, Boom752258 asks, what kind of wood is it? It's uh, some figured, um, figured oak. I think it's a brown oak, maybe. And, so, and maple and walnut for the uh, accents. Sorry, I'm trying to read this thing, but, you know, I got old eyes now. <laughs> See. Okay, so I see that there's some, I see that there's some 
comments about the delay. I am working on that. Um, I got to get, well, I got to sit down and take some time to kind of try to take care of that. I appreciate you guys sticking with me um, as I learn how to use this software um, to create these videos. So, Let's see, Boom75258 says he knows how to fix it. Uh, with OBS. Yes, I'm using OBS. If you know how to fix it, man, yeah, definitely send me a message so I can get that straightened out because uh, I'd like to fix that up. I'm using OBS. So, anyway. All right, so um, that just about finishes finishes this one up. Um, I probably won't do another video because I don't really think it's necessary in this one, in this series. Uh, but I will uh, go back to the uh, buffer and get it, uh, get this piece um, finished up to my liking. And I'll probably post some pictures tomorrow after I let the finish cure up a little bit, uh, and then I can go back and really buff it. Now I didn't really talk about the base, but. Um, if you remember from the um, previous video or and or go back and look at the previous video there was quite a bit more walnut showing on the base of this thing um, but because the tenon broke off twice it's going to be very small and there's actually a little bit of a cove I cut a little bit of a cove in there um, and my thinking is that that walnut is really just going to make a little shadow line once I part off uh, this little bit of material up here, which actually I'll probably cut it off with all the trouble I've been um, having uh, with getting this done. But um, overall, I'm pretty happy, um, you know, with every project. I think there's a couple places where uh, we would like to see some improvement, um, you know, as part of the as part of the learning process, part of the growing process uh, in this journey, as well as any other um, that you undertake. So. Um, but for the most part, I'm pretty happy with this. Um, um, I'm pretty happy with the with the way this turned out. And uh, yeah, thanks for <laughs> thanks for uh, coming along and joining me. I wasn't sure how exactly it was going to go trying to demonstrate a segmented piece because there's so many steps and so many uh, different processes that have to happen that don't translate well to video, like gluing up rings and sanding rings and all this other stuff but I think it went okay I mean feel free to leave me a comment if you felt like if you feel differently or if there's something that you think I could do better if I decided to do this again um, anyway so again thank you guys all for coming and, and, and hanging out with me and putting up with my uh, sync problems uh, thanks Steve um, putting up with my audio and video syncing problems and things um, I am working on that. I promise it will get better. Um, so anyway, um, thank you guys for coming and, and watching. And uh, remember to uh, dread not and make something. Get out there in your shops, make some dust, make some mistakes, you know, fix some problems, all that good stuff. Have some fun. Uh, anyway, um, good night, and uh, I'll see you next week. You know, I thought I had a smoother transition coming, but I didn't know, didn't figure out how to turn it off that fast. Okay, for real, I'm out. Peace.